Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. We're putting our three electric trucks to the tool test next on Now You Know. All right, so we've tested our Rivian R1T and our Ford F-150 Lightning with the power tool test before, but this is our first head-to-head -head now with our Tesla Cybertruck. We're gonna be testing to see how the trucks handle real-world tools. Can you show up at a job site and get to work? And how much work can you do before the truck gives out? What we're talking about specifically on this first test are the bed outlets. The Rivian has a pair of 120 volt outlets with one 15 amp circuit. The Cybertruck has a pair of 120 volt outlets on one 20 amp circuit and a 40 amp 240 volt outlet. And the Ford has two pairs of 120 volt outlets on what it says are two separate 20 amp circuits and it has a 30 amp 240 volt outlet. But we're gonna be putting that to the test to actually show that it's a little different than what they say. Let's start testing and see what they can do. First up, we'll go through an easy round, a simple drill. We'll start with the Ford. So this is under no load. Like 250, 300. Feet. All right, and now I'm about to do a hole. The drill seems to be drawing about 400 watts. Easy peasy for the Ford. And for the Cybertruck as well. No, that's good. Yeah, I'm glad we chose such a dull <laughs> drill bit. <laughs> Great. And no problem for the Rivian. If this is all you plan to do with your truck weekend warrior, then any of these trucks will do for you. But next up, let's see how they handle a little more juice, the angle grinder. The Ford, again, has no problem with the increased wattage. No load. Load. What was that? Like 700? <laughs> 600 watts. The Cybertruck handles grinding with style. It's almost like it's used to being ground metal. And the Rivian also handles the angle grinder test. So again, if you're planning on using a single tool at a time that would work on a 15 amp household circuit, then all three trucks are suitable for you. But how about we up the ante a bit? Maybe you wanna build something, not just tinker. Then you're gonna need to cut lumber and a beefy circular saw like the skill saw uses a lot of power. I know in the past I've blown a lot of breakers on 15 amp circuits while on job site. So let's see how the truck handles the saw test. <laughs> Wow, that thing draws a lot of current on the Ford. In fact, it was overpowering our kilowatts, so we had to stop using it. But the Ford's 20 amp circuit handles it no problem. The Cybertruck also has no problem with its 20 amp circuit. Now, I'm not sure if the Rivian can take it. Damn. Oh, that took a while. Yeah. I think these are 15 amp circuits. Yeah. Ooh, that's slow. That is slow. That really struggles. As you can hear, the saw doesn't ramp up very fast and barely has the power to make it through that cut. And that was an easy cut, by the way. I mean, I got the feeling that if I had pushed that saw real hard to cut through, say, hardwood or beefy 4x4, then it might have tripped the breaker. But so far, all three trucks have handled what we threw at them. Okay, now on to the circuit buster our trusty air compressor. Now, if you plan on building anything serious like a deck or an addition or a cabin in the woods, then you'll need air tools like nail guns. And to power those air tools, you'll need an air compressor. This thing has a huge draw on startup. It needs power. So let's see what happens. The Ford again has plenty of juice for the air compressor, no signs of struggle. And just to prove it's working, I'll do the gun in a second. Yep. All right. Nice, those went in. 
and the Cybertruck powers it like a champ. And just so we didn't waste nails, we were just draining the tank. It doesn't require any less power than a nail gun, oddly enough. 1.7. And now for the Rivian. I doubt it has the power. I've blown up so many circuit breakers on 15 amp circuits with this thing. Oh, it doesn't, not happy. Oh, I haven't heard it sound like that before. Yeah, I've run this on like household 15 amp circuits. When it runs like that, it's not happy. You can hear the compressor motor struggling. It's, it's not up to speed. This is a definite fail. It's just not enough juice. Okay, but here's the thing. When you're on a job site, the last thing you wanna be worried about is blowing breakers. Yeah, you, you wanna hook up your air compressors, your battery charging for your handheld cordless tools, string up some lights, run some extension cords and get to work. You can't be running around the job site shutting off the air compressor while you make a cut. So let's see if we can run more than one tool at a time. Let's start with the air compressor on while we make a cut with the skill saw. Starting with the Ford, it worked. We didn't blow it. We ran both at the same time without a problem. Okay, now onto the Cybertruck. Both tools running simultaneously and no problem here either. I think you could hear it sagging. Yeah, I did. Interesting. I wonder what that was pulling. A lot. A lot. Yeah. But it worked. It worked. All right, let's try the Rivian. I think it's going to fail. Oh, ooh, that was weird. <laughs> that was a weird noise. We, uh, we uh, shut it off. Uh, it's not coming back on like the Cybertruck. Got to do that manually, I guess. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's not really going to happen. <laughs> uh, one 15 amp circuit cannot handle this kind of load. So we blew the breaker. Yeah, this is a it fail. was D-E-D -E dead. Oh, oh, oh. It's not happening. Uh, 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 uh. I, I didn't like it. that. Oh, I hated that. Yeah, it's not enough. Not enough juice. So, <laughs> I'm kind of glad we parked him in this order. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I just didn't like how it treated the power tools. Cause like, what if you had, I know this would be stupid, but like, what if you had something that drew a lot of current and then like a computer, which would not like that voltage sag. Yeah, no, this is, that's for a uh, campsite. Although honestly, you might bring a microwave or a blender or a heater. I know. And those draw a lot of current. That's true. So, so I mean, that's, that's 15 amps for you. These two are 20. <sighs> Big Interesting. Difference. Yeah, one thing to note is that uh, the Rivian doesn't turn back on automatically. You have to switch it back on in the cab. Now, can you do it from your phone? No, which oh. is a little unfortunate. Yikes, so if I was on a ladder, that would be kind of a bummer. Yeah, if you were on a roof, in a, in a hole in the basement, uh, there have been many times where if the power went out, it would have been a real hassle to have to go turn that back on. And yeah, you have to go all the way back into the cab to turn on the outlets again. All right, let's push this one step harder. Let's add a third tool. How about we see what happens when we add the angle grinder into the mix? Okay, let's start with the Ford. <laughs> wow. All three of these tools running without a hiccup. That's all one circuit. Yeah, so Ford passed all those tests with flying colors. Yeah, it's kind of expected. It's what happened last time. But yeah, you get a 20 amp circuit along with another 20 amp circuit, which we didn't even need to use. Okay, so it's showing 3,400 watts and that's just on one of Ford's two bed outlet circuits? This is weird because on the outlets themselves, they say that it's a 20 amp circuit and we were pulling 3,400 watts. That's 28.3 amps without blowing the breaker. How is that possible? I think I've figured it out. Okay. I think that basically Ford used the two legs of the 240 volt 30 amp circuit to power the 120 volt circuits in the bed. And so basically these are actually 30 amp circuits. Interesting. So that would explain why we could pull the 3400 watts or 28.3 amps without blowing that breaker. Exactly. And you know, even if we had struggled on that circuit, we could have just plugged into the second circuit, I guess. So actually you're getting two 30 amp 120 volt circuits, I think. It's really exciting because that's a lot of power. It's a little scary because if you were using some crappy extension cords, you could- Yeah, you could melt them. You could melt those. Look, I gotta say when it comes to electric power for tools, the Ford shines. It really is a job site truck in this regard. Especially because we were just using the bed outlets. Okay, but now onto the Cybertruck. 
So with all three tools running, we see that we're drawing a ton of power. We killed That's it. it. We killed it. <laughs> Whoa, hey! It came alive. That's a little dangerous. <laughs> wow. Came back with a vengeance. But I will say that this was too much current draw for the 20 amp circuit in the Cybertruck. And that makes sense why the Ford was able to do it because it was pulling about 30 amps. So Jesse, I think a lot of people are gonna ask the question which my mind is asking now, yeah. which is there are two physical outlets for the 110 on the Cybertruck. Right. We were plugged into one of them. Right. Are they two separate circuits? Let's go test it out. All right. All right, so I'm gonna plug the, this big hog of a saw into the second physical outlet. Okay, and I'll have the grinder and, and this. And the compressor. We'll see basically, if I, we get I'll that wait. Sag. Yeah, I'll wait on the grinder until we're doing both, because we could hear the sag from with just the saw, but we had a huge sag with the grinder and the saw. So let's try that. All right, so fire up the compressor first. All right. Okay, that's going. All right, we'll get the saw going. It sounds better. Oh, same circuit. All right. All right, so I think that proves that that's one circuit. One, what would you say? Probably 20 amp circuit? Yeah. Um, obviously the Fords seemed a little bit beefier because we were able to run all three things. And you know what's interesting? Is when we blew the circuit, it would come back a couple seconds later. Oh, same circuit. All right. So unlike the Ford where you have to physically go hit the button, mm -hmm. this like resets itself, which I don't know, it's just good to know that that's what it's gonna do because yes. it could be dangerous. Well, like I was holding a grinder, <laughs> which has a switch that doesn't turn off when the power goes off. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. I'll just lay it down. And maybe I would put it down and then it would turn back on and go crazy. But it, it turned on so quickly that I think that the likelihood of, of that kind of dangerous situation it's, happening. It's all about knowing what it's gonna do. Right. Um, but it, it was so quick to, to come back. I think that that's really neat. I like that. Um, because that means if you have something that's running like a refrigerator or something, um, it would at least try and kick back on so we don't come back to a bunch of spoiled groceries. Unlike the Ford, it appears that the Cybertruck has just one 120 volt, 20 amp circuit in the bed. So we just tested the bed outlets on all of these. Uh, the interesting thing about the Ford is that it has a frunk outlet, which is on a separate circuit, and the interior, which is on its own separate circuit. So these are all 20 amp circuits. Three, 110, 20 amp circuits? Four, because there's two in the back. Oh, wow. Um, plus the 220, right. which is really impressive and good on Ford for doing. But what I want to find out is if the Cybertruck has a separate loop for the interior circuits. Okay. All right, I'm ready when you are. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the compressor first. Okay. Should I do the grinder next? Okay. All right. I didn't hear any sag. What? I didn't hear any sag, did you? I heard a sag in my grinder. Oh, okay. So I think they might be in the same circuit, although we didn't kill it that time. No. Weird. Do we need to plug in more things? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so this was weird because we noticed what appeared to be a sag in the voltage, or at least in the power, but it didn't blow the breaker. So, I mean, it appears that this did work. It is a separate circuit. Um, even though you'd have to run an extension cord into the cabin, there is an additional 20 amp circuit available in the Cybertruck. So this might seem like the Ford has conquered the Cybertruck, but I have an idea. Hmm. We've ordered something which could turn the tide. We'll be bringing this to you on a video soon, so be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification button so you don't miss it. Because I haven't seen anybody else talk about this. But hang on, Jesse, it's time to roll out the big guns. What if you want to use some really beefy tools? Like what? How about some serious welding? All right, let's get our TIG welder hooked up, and this is a beefy little guy. All right, I'm ready to do some welding. Oh, well, then we better, uh... Whoa, 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 what? Well, I mean, this is just 110. It can't handle 220, you know? It's... Let the big boys get to work, Rivian. All right, see ya. Sorry, Rivian. Now, what's cool is that depending on what we're welding, we can draw a little juice or a lot. Yeah, so it's a good test. So let's start with a simple bead on say 80 amps on the Cybertruck's 240 volt, 40 amp circuit. All 
Oh, yeah. Wow, that was no problem. No problem. Yeah, you drew about 2,400 watts, it looks like, but the Cybertruck didn't even break a sweat. And that's interesting because that would have blown the 120 volt, 20 amp circuit that's in the back of the Cybertruck. So even though this welder could be plugged into 120 volts, you really do want to be running it on 240. All right then, so let's crank it up to 220 amps. Yes, let's weld a bridge and let's see what happens. 7.6 kilowatts. How much? 7.6. Wow. You were drawing about 7.6 <laughs> kilowatts. Yeah, I maxed it out. <laughs> Yeah, and I was blowing holes through my steel. It appears that you have all the power you need for any welding tasks with the Cybertruck. All right, now it's on to the Ford. All right, here we go. Oh, it doesn't like it. Oh man, it died. Looks like you got up to around 4,000 watts before it blew the breaker? No. Well, I think it's only because the Ford screen only updates every few seconds. And so I know you were adding those two legs together. I mean, I was definitely pulling mucho amps with the welder. I definitely brought it above 3,000 watts. I mean, obviously I pulled it above 30 amps because I mean, I was pulling 7.6 off of the Cybertruck. I see, it's just because the screen doesn't update. I think that that's it, which is too bad for testing purposes because we couldn't see what we drew, but it's just because it blew so fast. But one thing to note was that the welder did not seem happy on the Ford's plug even before I floored it, because on a TIG welder, you have a pedal which adjusts the amperage. It's almost like a little accelerator pedal. And I wasn't giving it the full amperage before it blew. And even before then, it was like, it did not seem to like uh, the power it was getting from the Ford. Yeah, I think this is a really important point. Uh, a lot of people might hear what sounds like a big number, 240 volts, 30 amps. But those of us who use big tools in the shop know that there is a big difference between 30 amps and the Cybertruck's 40 amps. Those extra 10 amps equate to an additional 2,400 watts. Now, in our experience, 30 amps will handle some pretty beefy tools, but only when you're not pushing them, kind of like light duty uses. But when you need all the power that that tool can give, your peak loads need extra juice. And I'm glad that Tesla went the extra mile and bested the Ford with 40 amps in the bed. All right, so there you have it, folks. Ford and Tesla both handled pretty much every electric tool that we threw at them. Ford came out ahead in terms of the number of circuits, but Cybertruck actually has the most juice. And once we implement our new idea, I think Cybertruck might actually come out ahead, so stay tuned. And yes, I hear a lot of you, you're probably yelling at your screens now, Ford has outlets in the front, and I love that. I wish that Cybertruck and Rivian had done the same. And since we're talking about the Rivian, I mean, it's just looking more and more like a toy truck now that the Cybertruck has come out because it just doesn't cut it in terms of tools. Look, we have so many exciting videos coming out on Cybertruck that you guys have picked the topics for. Please consider joining our Patreon over at patreon.com slash now you know. Not only will you be getting all of our weekly story videos for just a buck a month, but you'll also get to help pick topics for the electric head to head videos. So what do you wanna know? We want the community to decide. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know which truck you thought did the best. We'll see you soon. Now, now you know. know. What's the secret idea?